Today I'm going to talk to you about synthetic flats and why I think every astrophotographer should have this technique in their back pocket. Recently I had a stretch of about four days where I was able to roll out the telescope and image multiple targets over multiple nights. This was great until I went back and finally had a chance to look at the data and I, after calibration, um, and processing, I found out that my flats for my luminance channel just did not work out. You can actually see an image of that here. Well, certainly when I saw something like this, I was not too happy. And after looking at the other targets I imaged, I found this problem was across the board. Basically what had happened to me is that we had a lot of pollen over that couple day stretch and the pollen was moving around on the corrector plate. It was affecting my images but did not make its way into my flats. So what I was able to do is to create synthetic flats from my calibrated images. Uh, you can do the same thing with raw light frames as well but I'm going to take you through that process of how I created the synthetic flats and how I was able to go from that picture which ultimately gave me this image. Hopefully you'll find this technique and video useful to you. You'll be able to salvage some old data you thought was useless or use it in the future when you maybe forget simply to take flats for one of your imaging sessions. Please like and subscribe and let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna take you through the process of creating and applying synthetic flats to your images. This is what my integrated, uh, calibrated and integrated red channel looked like once it was stacked uh, for the Needle Galaxy. So I, I do have some reflections. You'll see another one up here later. Uh, for my, I don't think it's bright stars this time. I think it's actually some lights that were outside. So I'll just have to deal with that. Uh, the green channel, um, again, not too bad. Um, th this clipping up here on most of the channels you'll see, for the most part, I think that is my um, OAG prism. So my off-axis guide or prism uh, clips a little bit in there, the way I've got the camera rotated. Blue channel, again, uh, same thing, doesn't look too bad. But when we look at this loom channel, it was sort of a train wreck. Um, and, you know, I, I was kind of worried I was going to lose all this data. This synthetic flat... Um, capability is something that I hope not to have to use often. I'd rather use my regular flat process, but um, I think it's something everyone should be aware of. So we'll just run through it quick. Now, the way I'm going to do it here um, is I've already set up some process icons. I'm going to see if I can't get these uh, published somewhere for you so you can just grab these and use them yourself. Um, this is nothing I've created. So this is something that's been around for a while. Um, the best blog I've seen that goes through this in detail and actually even expands upon this a little bit is the Trapped Photons blog. Um, if you haven't visited there, definitely visit. It's a fantastic blog with a lot of great information related to astrophotography. So I'm, I'm going to kind of go through that process here. And then again, if I can find a way to publish and share this, I will so that you can uh, get your hands on it and, and save yourself some time. It's pretty easy to use if you already have the icons already. So first things first, uh, when creating the synthetic flat, I've already got calibrated images, right? Because I stacked those uh, those channels, including the loom channel. So I've already have a, have a calibrated image um, and I've already got calibrated uh, subs that created that integration. And that includes my darks. I did not have a bias. I'm using an ASI 1600 mm and I tend not to use um, biases. I do use flat darks and uh, dark. So I, I've integrated the dark and I've integrated the flat that I did have, which, which did help a little bit, but again, there was a lot missing from that flat. Uh, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, try to create a synthetic flat from that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go add some files and let me go in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into my um, calibrated folder, right? So I, I don't wanna use what I previously registered and aligned, right? Because I need to make sure that it's in the same format. It hasn't, none of the pictures have been shifted so that my flats uh, will work the way I expect them to work. If I ever need to go back and apply them later to another image, um, like uh, my raw lights as an example. So I specifically, I'm gonna go into my calibrated folder and I'm gonna grab just the L filter here. Now this is set up, it's, it's pretty much the regular integration process that you would normally have. The difference here um, is that th there's two pieces really. So we've got some, I'm using Windsorized um, scale and zero offset, but if you look at pixel rejection, sigma low and sigma high 
have been set to one, right? So we're trying to get rid of um, most of the, let's call them objects at this point, right? So we're going to just go ahead and do this. So we're going to do an integration of my previously calibrated frames so that we can create my flat. Okay, so the integration's done. I'll close this out. I can get rid of my rejections. I could have unchecked that if I wanted. And we'll go ahead and uh, stretch this. And you can see what it's done here. So um, I might have a couple hot pixels in here. Um, I've got some um, artifacts still left behind, some stars, and obviously the needle itself, the new galaxy is still in here. And we're going to work on that. So the next step is to do our hot pixel removal. Now this is pixel math again on the Trapped Photons blog. Um, you can uh, get this pixel math. If I can make this available, you won't need it because you can just grab it from here. So there's some complexity in here, but it's basically a single um, copy paste into the RGBK and uh, some symbols you need to paste in. And if I look at the destination, we're just gonna replace target image. So I can just apply this to that integration. This will run pretty quickly here. And again, our goal is to replace hot pixels. And you can do something similar, if not the same with cosmetic correction, but this works well, right? So the hot pixels are gone. So the next thing is small scale noise. So if we have some small scale noise, fundamentally, this is going to end up looking like, um, you know, sort of a blurred image once we're done with it. And what we have is a multi-scale medium transform you notice it's got five layers, so you may have to increase that, the, right? The, typically it starts with about four, so we'll go to five layers, and we're going to actually disable them. So we'll unclick detail layer, so we'll get it down so that only uh, this uh, scale 32 layer is there. And what we're trying to do is, again, get rid of some more of these objects and smooth it out a little bit. So we'll go ahead and apply that. And this should happen pretty quickly as well. And you can see it's blurted out and uh, cleaned it a little bit, right? So it's a little smoother. And then the next step is clone stamp. So from a clone stamp perspective, uh, this doesn't usually carry over for some reason in the um, uh, in the process icons. So if I can get this to carry over, great. If not, you just know you have to change this. I, I'm going to do exactly what Trapped Photons blog does and go to 55. You can play with these. Uh, this just I know works for this particular one. And we're going to bring the opacity down really low as well. And if you haven't done clone stamp before, when you uh, go on the screen, what we're trying to do is we're going to get rid of these stars and then the large object afterwards. I don't know that I'm going to mess with the um, uh, the actual reflections just yet. We may leave those in there for now, but we're going to go ahead and get rid of the stars. And to do that, we want to match intensity. So we're going to replace this, right? So what you do is find a place that looks like the same intensity. Uh, you hold control and click, and that's where I'm copying from. And then we're just going to kind of replace stuff, right? So again, what you'll end up doing is getting rid of some of these stars. And this could take a little time. So what you may find you have to do, right, as you're copying things out, sometimes you'll copy stuff in you didn't mean to. So like over here, um, I'll match the intensity. Again, be careful around these artifacts, right? These are the artifacts I'm trying to get rid of. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do this. And what you may find from time to time is you need to change where you're copying from. Again, just hold control, click the new location so that you can get, you know, maybe underneath or to the left or wherever you need to be. Like this one, I'm going to have to change a little bit just so I can get over here. But again, look at the intensity of where you're copying from and the area you're going to to make sure you've got a match, right? So it's coming out pretty good so far. Um, I'm not going to do this perfectly. I'm just going to show you uh, what a little bit of effort can do, but we're going to go ahead and speed this up. Okay, this isn't perfect, but now we're going to try to get rid of the larger scale object, and sometimes matching the intensity here can be tricky, so we might do it in a couple passes as we sort of thin this out. Um, you could try to do some other things. Uh, you could try to use DBE maybe at this point to get rid of some things. Um, there's a number of other tools you can use. Um, but again, it's it's not going to be perfect. You may have to try a couple different locations. But anything will be better than my original integration. So I'm going to finish this up and then we'll come back. 
Okay, so this is about as good as I'm going to go this time. Uh, you can take more time with it, um, as much as you need. Play with the opacities, play with the radius, um, do what it takes to get this right, right? So we're trying to clean it up so that all we're left with is what appears to be a flat. Now, before you navigate away from Clone Stamp, if you haven't used this tool before, you need to commit this. If I were to close this right now, I would lose all of my work. So go ahead and execute it and it will commit the work, and then we can close the clone stamp tool. So now we've got this integration. Now this, at this point, you'll notice step five is save our file now. This is our synth flat. So I'm gonna change the integration name, the identifier, to be synth flat L, and then I'm gonna go ahead and save it as, and I'm gonna save it as a fits file into our working folder. Okay, so we've committed the save, and we can minimize that now. So now we're going to go back, and we're going to calibrate with our synth flat. So we're going to go ahead and add our calibrated files. That's where we started from, right? But just the loom channel. Because basically we're now recalibrating these calibrated files with the additional information of the synthetic flat. So we'll go ahead and add all these loom channel uh, files. We are going to output, and I'm going to, you can't overwrite, I'm going to actually output to a new location. So I'm going to output this to a new folder, and we'll call it Cal Synth. Um, all of this is basically the same. Um, I'm not going to have to do bias or darks, right? All I need to do is add in the master flat. Now, if you did not previously calibrate, you are going to want to do that. So again, um, I could have added the master dark and a bias in at this point if I were using the original raw light frames, but since I worked from pre-calibrated files, um, I don't need to do that, right? The, the, the master flat actually already has, and so do my subs already have calibrated information in them. So I'm going to go ahead and use the synth flat here that we just created. And again, it's that easy, right? So we're adding them, uh, adding the subs, the calibrated subs. I'm going to apply our synth flat to it and we'll go ahead and execute that. And we're going to speed this up here. Okay, I've got the files calibrated with my synth flat. And if you think about your normal working process, right? So now I'll register them. So we'll do star alignment. Um, I need to align them to something that's a reference. And since I've already calibrated and integrated and aligned all of these other subs, uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna grab my um, red channel and use that um, as the basis for my alignment, right? So I'm gonna align all of these new calibrated subs to um, to that red channel. And then I know all those are the RGB and the previous L are already um, aligned. So I'm gonna go and grab my synthetic the calibrated files, use the synthetic flat on. So I've got them there. I'm not going to generate um, drizzle data for this, um, just for this demonstration. And I'm going to output these again to another new folder. And we're going to call this reg synth. Again, you can do this any way you want, but I'm just going to keep it separate. And I don't have to do anything else, right? That's pretty much it, right? So I'm going to align all of these new calibrated files with my R sub, and we'll go ahead and apply this. Okay, so I've calibrated and aligned the synthetically corrected subs, and now it's really just a question of image integration. So image integration, we'll add our files, and which ones we're going to add? We're going to add the the newly registered files. I don't have any L norm or drizzle, right? That's fine. The image integration, um, this is okay. We'll just do additive scaling. We're going to go with defaults here, uh, so all of this will be okay. Pixel rejection, we'll go ahead um, and do linear fit, right? So if you're not familiar with it, you can just mouse over the rejection. And since I've got um, a lot of subs, we'll just do linear fit. Um, we can get rid of the rejection maps. That's fine. And I think we're good to go. All right, so we have our image integrated. Let's take a look. Now, 
so this is what we ended up with after using the synthetic flat. Now, again, it's not perfect, right? I can see some things down here um, that maybe I could have done a better job with from a clone stamp perspective, but let's compare it to what we had before, right? With my original flats. Um, you know, this on the right is data I can use, right? I mean, this looks pretty good. Um, it pulled out some details. Uh, the, the main target, primary target looks good, but you know, most of the mess that we had here um, isn't there anymore, right? That looks pretty good. I mean, this is usable. So again, I mean, I think this is just something that you should have in your back pocket. It's something you may need. Maybe your flats don't work one time or you forget to take flats and being able to generate a synthetic flat uh, on the fly to save data um, you know, you, you may not win an APOD, but, um, you're not going to throw away one or two nights, right? Worth of effort. So, um, you know, hopefully you found this useful. Again, go visit the Trapped Photons, uh, blog. It's, it's a wealth of knowledge. Um, hopefully this helped and, uh, come back for more another time. Please subscribe and uh, take a look at my other videos. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll keep making content and hopefully I can help everyone out there as much as I've been helped over the years. Thank you.